Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verlus here, and we're going to have fun with this one because Brute Bonnet is wild. So if you end up enjoying the video or if it helps out in any way, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, and comment your thoughts down below. So what does Mega Amoongus look like? We have 111 on the hit points, pretty much the same, and then dual 99s on the defenses. So we're a bit tankier than the Amoongus. What do we get out of that? So defense is going to be about 25% more durable. Special defense is going to be about 15% more durable when fully invested. However, Brute Bonnet doesn't really seem to be a better Amoongus, mostly because of the typing. Grass Dark. That is, that is awful. Turns out you don't want to be that if you're trying to survive at all. Fighting, Flying, Poison, 4x Bug Weakness, Fire, Ice, and Fairy. You do pick up a good amount of resistances, but when we compare that to Amoongus, like, Amoongus gets the good resistances, and then not too bad on the weaknesses. Flying, kind of common, kind of not really though. Fire, mostly non-stab hits. Psychic, not very common. Ice, kind of a threat, but Amoongus just absorbs everything. And that's kind of what Amoongus' goal is. That it can clear smog, so no setup, and then just locks the opponent out of the game while providing cover for the rest of the team, lay down Spore for like switch support, or get Amoongus like back up to health, and then the regenerator ability. This is where Brute Bonnet fails by being locked into the Protosynthesis. And that's just like a weird thing about the Paradox Pokemon. You can get away with this because they effectively don't have an ability. Now you can boost their energy, but depending on the Pokemon, the most you get out of it is 30% for trading an item. So it's like a weird mega-ish restriction. Also, the movesets can be different and the way the Pokemon builds is different, but there's a couple other things that Brute Bonnet can specialize in, and that's what makes it spicy. Also, Moongus, it's just such a strong, good, filthy, ridiculous Pokemon. Like, you don't need to Terra-type the Amoongus, so keep the Black Sludge for that Poison typing, free up a leftover slot. If you're going for Tank Brute Bonnet, has the leftovers, will absorb that for your item claws, and then kind of does the same thing. It spores on 55 speed, so we can sort by speed and scroll down for a while to find out the tank matchups we win. Now we don't catch some of the nasty Pokemon in higher speed tiers, like the Corviknight and the Skeledurge in the mid-60s. As we go down, we see Orthworm, we see a few other Pokemon, but it is nice to have the 55 as opposed to the 30 on Amoongus. And at the same time, you kind of get a few things, you kind of don't. Maybe you're playing around with like speed ties on the Blissey so the game gets a little bit ugly. You do have the natural outspeed into the Gargan Assault, but with that thing going ghost type or flying type and also not being able to be status because of Spore, also by clicking off the page we have reset where the speed is, so that's fun. As we scroll down, we see King Gambit, Chansey, few other Pokemon, so when we get into like the really bulky Pokemon, we just kind of power speed creep them just a little bit, so you're going to outspeed more than the Amoongus while not doing as tanky, disgusting things as the Amoongus if you're playing it as a pure tank. Now we do have a 127 on the attack, so we can just hit things while being very tanky, and that could be a potential angle to play on this Pokemon, but the moveset can look very similar until you throw in some kind of physical move in here. And you have some weird stuff. Close combat? Outrage? And then just also stab moves and some other random stuff you can tech in. So yeah, if you're trying to run Brute Bonnet as like a Spore tank that is much better than Amoongus, it isn't. Just kind of throw that away and go into the Amoongus because Regenerator just gives you all that durability back. Black Sludge opens up options and then you're just more proficient at doing those things. Also, you wouldn't want Impish because of the Giga Drain. Fold. There you go. That's that's Amoongus. However, Brute Bonnet has just a lot of weird stuff that makes it fun and gets me excited about Pokemon. So this thing can mold into a very interesting bulky attacking Pokemon that actually has multiple ways to play. So the first thing I want to look at is that 127 with the dart typing Sucker Punch. It gets all that. That sounds kind of spicy. Is there a Pokemon better at Sucker Punching? So we search by Sucker Punch, change it to attack. Not really, it's King Gambit's 135 attack that gives us a better stab Sucker Punch, but Brute Bonnet is right there with eh, about the same, but also more bulk, but also just different things. Like this thing can just throw out a Spore if it wants to as well. Also has Taunt and the Synthesis. So Brute Bonnet sustains on King Gambit durability. 
and is also immune to spore itself because of the grass typing, immune to prankster because of the dark typing. Got some wildness. Uh, slightly harder hitting than Bisharp, but Bisharp wants to swords dance and then sucker punch, so has its own thing going on there. And then yeah, the dark power kind of drops off on that. So it's like, we have one of the best sucker punching Pokemon in the game. Unfortunately, this thing doesn't really boost any of its stats. You don't have bulk up, you don't have swords dance, so you don't like gain crazy boosting on the sucker punch, but you're still a bulky Pokemon that has sustain and then other options. Like you can just taunt a tanky Pokemon that's trying to set up or something slower than you, and then that opens up into damage on Seed Bomb, restoring on Synthesis, or finding just paths to the Sucker Punch because they're taunted. Now you don't need to run the taunt, I just kind of put this here as an option to kind of show, yeah, there's a few things that this gets that Amoongus doesn't, like Amoongus can't taunt you even though Clear Smog is pretty close, but what if you can like tech in something else? Because now we have a 150 base power move, non-stab, but... Sucker Punch, if it doesn't connect, that means the opponent is going for some kind of status, which means your Brute Bonnet isn't taking damage, so then you can turn that into a Stomping Tantrum on a 127 attack Pokemon, you get that Adamant Nature, so you find the extra damage, and then you're still just a very bulky bulk, bulk Pokemon, so that's pretty nice, Seed Bomb for the coverage, like, that's what I mean, you can kind of run this as a very unique and interesting and threatening bulky attack Pokemon. So let's see what that damage and durability looks like. So we have a 100 base hit points, 97 defense Pokemon in the Palafin. That Seed Bomb almost finding a KO without any items, and we survive the close combat. So no items or no adamant nature on the Palafin. But even then, like, these trades are kind of wild. And it's like you land the Seed Bomb Sucker Punch. So Seed Bomb Sucker Punch combo has a lot of KO potential in the game. We can also just... You know, throw on a Choice Band for the Pokemon, so how does the Choice Band damage look? That's 57 to 67 on a very bulky Pokemon. If we take a more frail sweeping Pokemon like the Jolteon, and then we drop that down to level 50, 127 neutral adamant Choice Band stab Sucker Punch, that just KOs. And this could also get really wild if you go into, if, if you just go all in. Dark type Terra, Choice Band, if we're running Choice Band, then that means you can't have the Synthesis. Also, Stomping Tantrum kind of falls off at that point. So it's really just about, like, you go for the Choice Dark Boosted Sucker Punch because it is one of the hardest hits out there. Um, you are giving up the Synthesis, so technically, if you're, like, Supreme Overlord on the King Gambit, and then you're doing this, you're going to find more damage there. But Brute Bonnet just kind of fills its own niche for this and provides different kind of coverage options. And just a lot of coverage. Like, that Choice Band Outrage 127 non-stab is still gonna hurt and just consume Dragon-type Pokemon. You have the close combat if it's like absolute last-ditch desperation. So I mean like, you have a wild coveraging Pokemon with the primary threat of just Sucker Punch one-shotting Frail Pokemon or two-shotting pretty much anything else as it's way too bulky to KO just one-shot itself. But if you're playing it for the primary Sucker Punch damage, we can see that it actually threatens some of the more frail Pokemon in the game. And even as you work your way up into durability, uh, let's go against that Palafin again. So we do all this, but then the Terra type giving us 30% more damage means like, that's, that's just a lot of hurt. That's just a lot of hate you are putting onto the opponent. So if it's a longer battle, or if there's been like random bits of chip that have just kind of happened here and there, that Sucker Punch is going to just find a lot of KOs either after the Pokemon has been hurt a little bit or just from full health. So that's what I mean, you have a very unique, bruiser, bulky, attacking Pokemon that can get away with some shenanigans depending on how you want to play it. That Choice Band damage just kind of seems like the direct way of running it, but you can also kind of get cute with some other setups, like I said, on the Synthesis, playing around tank Pokemon. I also think a lot of people are sleeping on Quick Claw in Generation 9, and this could be a really good Pokemon for that because you just have so much bulk that nothing is going to tilt someone harder than getting that chance to just outspeed Spore. The one shot you had at dealing with the Brute Bonnet, gone. Or it's like, oh, the KO's coming! Nope, there's the Synthesis. And then you have some damage to return. Uh, I don't know if this works as well for like Adamant Nature, Max, and you're just kind of going for the damage. But I mean, like, just kind of converting that bulky attacker. It does 
patch in that weirdness while I was talking about like, okay, you want to choice band, but you also want to get the full utility of your synthesis. That way you bring something that other dark sucker punching Pokemon don't have such as the King Gambit and the Bisharp and other Pokemon. So this actually is a good way of finding all that. You fall off on the damage, but that's made up in just being able to win out the matchups that you're too slow to otherwise do anything with. Another interesting idea is Payback Shell Bell. Now I know, Shell Bell is a noob trap item. I'm the person that started that back in Generation 6 when people didn't know any better. The reason why Shell Bell is a bad item is unless you are one-shotting Pokemon, every single time without any kind of damage boost baked into the item of the Pokemon, it's just worse than leftovers because if it takes two turns to KO, 1 16th, 1 16th is 1 8th. Also, if you're using a bulky attacker, if a Pokemon has 70 base hit points, there's less to leech off of with the Shell Bell, so you're getting even less than the leftovers would heal you, and then that means also you can just do something like this with the Citrus Berry, which means you're getting two KOs worth at once, with the one quarter max hit point restoration. So I was thinking like, okay, but what if like, because you're so bulky, because you have a 127 attack, you use payback. So it becomes a 100 base power move, 130 if we're going to be going for that extra Terra boost on top of it. What does that KO? Well, I mean, we kind of saw a little bit of that damage with the Sucker Punch. And then when you think about it, the number looks really familiar compared to like a choice banded Sucker Punch. So kind of close on that. and. You're not quite one-shotting a Palafin, but what about like an 80-80 Pokemon, something a bit more reasonable? Getting closer. So if something hits you for like 40%, and then you can one-shot it and get not quite an eighth, but then you see you're not getting an eighth of your health back. You're getting a tenth of your health back after taking 40%, so maybe you do it again on the payback. That doesn't really work. So yeah, the Citrus Berry lets you stay in for longer on some kind of cheese like this. And that could also make you, like, a really big threat as well. It's like, okay, you're either taking the big payback, or if I need to finish you off, it's Sucker Punch. So you just take the hit, payback, Sucker Punch, that's a KO. Take the hit, Citrus Berry, payback, Sucker Punch, that's a KO. So on and so forth, depending on the stats you're trying to milk out of it with such a tanky Pokemon. So this could actually go 2+. plus. It's, it's very predictable, but unless the opponent, like doesn't read into it super hard. Maybe they're thinking, oh, this thing's gonna spore me, I need to get as much damage down before that spore happens, and then it's like, they hit you, payback, that sucker punch is coming, or there's just a sucker punch hanging out there. Still stings. Still doesn't feel good. So you can either be an anti-sweeper with this move set, or you can kind of set up as some kind of, like, thick wall-breaking Pokemon with that 127. You can also just get cute. Like, we have booster energy, so we talked about how it's not the greatest, because it's only 30% damage, but I mean, you get it once, so you kind of need to commit to using it, but if you use the booster energy, get that 30%, it's like a life orb that doesn't hurt you, that lets you change your move, so you can still get a lot of out, out of that, maybe keep that dark option for the uh, Sucker Punch shenanigans, and then Thief, like, how's that going to work? What kind of madness do you get away with on this? Because that Thief is still going to hurt! We just do not care about eating some of the biggest hits in the game. We have Make It Rain from Golden Go, 133 on that special attack, modest nature, 120 base power, neutral hit, and we barely are a two shot. Like, it's still a two a KO, still is threatening, but then we do all of our booster energy stuff, so we get the 30% onto the Thief. And then if we get another 30% out of the Terra boosting, then we can see we're just KOing the Golden Goat even at 252 on the hit points with Thief. Now this is a super effective hit, but it just kind of shows like Thief Sucker Punch combo, that just KOs pretty much anything. If you find that super effective on some kind of weird matchup, like this just works. So you're getting that boost from the booster energy, and then you're like stealing Citrus Berries, which just gives you more longevity. You're stealing a Leftovers, that could get pretty crazy. Maybe some absolute weird shenanigans happen if you steal a Choice Scarf and then you're able to just like outspeed one of their other bulky Pokemon and turn that match up. Maybe you're doing against a different Pokemon, you get a Choice Band, so now you have the 1.3x from the Booster Energy, but then you're going Choice Band, Terra, Sucker Punch, and then really one-shotting everything. That's why I mean like there's a couple of cute things you can do with the Brute Bonnet, and that Dark really opens it up to having a lot of fun, and then also, still the Stab, Seed Bomb, Booster Energy, 127, things don't want to take that damage. And then you just kind of round out the rest of your coverage, 
You put in that Zen headbutt, you're just having a good time. The Zen headbutt just lets you beat Amoongus and other poison type Pokemon. You outspeed, you tag them, eventually they fall behind on the synthesis, or they just get flinched, and it's game over. Also, Brute Bonnet, kind of a safe switch in to the Amoongus, because if it's a Spore, well, it's a completely immune hit. But even if it's the clear smog to try like shut down one of your Pokemon that's setting up, not the craziest amount of damage. Like, you can eat a clear smog, force out the Amoongus, and then take another hit from another opposing Pokemon. So you're getting two hits plus a Sucker Punch or more at the Brute Bonnet. So you come in, you set up that boost energy, and now you're also just looking really threatening against a lot of different Pokemon in the game, and you can convert a lot of that as well. So that's what I mean, this thing has some really fun gimmicks to explore. I feel like you can get into some problems if you trap yourself on identity, because yeah, you want boost energy, but you also want the synthesis. That way you're not forced out, and then you just lose the booster energy for free, but then you're giving up coverage now, water-type Pokemon. You don't just get to completely blow them up. You don't want to lose the priority on Sucker Punch. So you have to play it very specifically, and then build your team around the Brute Bonnet you're running instead of the Brute Bonnet that you wish you had. You could also get really ignorant with some rest sleep talk strategy. Uh, maybe if you need like just a dedicated tank of one kind on your team, you go all in on the hit points, all in on the defense. You can still get away with the booster energy here, and now you just have one of the strongest defense tanks in the game that can synthesis. Uh, you can even run a Confuse Ray on this Pokemon if you want to be really nasty. Again, then you have Spore. So playing it like a different kind of Amoongus, that's still an option. But I also do like the idea of just being a bruisery, bulky kind of Pokemon. Giving up damage for the Assault Vest, I don't really think so, because it's not like, oh, I'm going to stay in for the super effective Ice-type or Fire-type hit, mm, or Fairy-type hit, and then do something with the Assault Vest. I don't think that's the angle you want on it. So you still want to back this Pokemon up with, like, other sustainy tank Pokemon. But it can do a lot of really fun stuff. And, like, that that could just cheese tilt your opponent to win the game. Like I said, you boost energy, Thief, Sucker Punch, that's a KO. Sucker Punch for crazy more damage. They can't touch you. What can they do at some points? If they have bulkier Pokemon, you get to out-sustain them with the Synthesis and then just beat them down, potentially. While also stealing their Leftovers or Citrus Berry or something. So yeah, Brute Bonnet can just kind of show up and wreck, and I think there's a lot of fun to be had with this Pokemon, so I can't wait to see what happens on the Battle Stadium, or maybe just like, Spore Lameness ends up winning out, but then you're just running Amoongus instead, so I don't know, kind of fun, and also seeing both these Pokemon on the same team can also get pretty cute as well, so I hope you guys enjoy the video, hope you all have a nice day, thank you very much for watching.